Howdy y'all, welcome to Nerd Studio. We're out at the range today with a three-speed holster. Stay tuned. Yeehaw! Before I get started, some of you may have noticed that I uh, actually did a video on the three-speed holster last week and posted it, I think, on Monday. And uh, about 30 or 40 of you saw it, and then the video disappeared. And so I wanted to take a second to really explain why that happened, uh, just so there's no confusion. I, I uh, did the video last weekend, uh, really you know, enjoyed it, thought it was good, had a, had a great time doing it. Put the video up and uh, sent an email to Joe at Three Speed Holster and said, hey, I, I did the video on your holster. I thought you'd want to see it and uh, enjoy the product. Thanks very much. And uh, it wasn't too long later, he replied back with an email and said, I watched about the first eight minutes, the video was about 30 minutes long, and he said, uh, I watched about the first eight minutes, and uh, how do I say this gently? Um, you got it all wrong. <laughs> we really appreciate that you're doing the holster, but you got a bunch of core facts uh, incorrect about the construction of the holster and how it's designed, and, and I went, oh, okay. And he asked me to give him a call. So we, we had about, uh, uh, initially about a 20 minute chat, and uh, he was pointing out the, the, and they were just pure facts about the construction of the holster and things that were, it wasn't a matter of opinion, they were just wrong. So uh, I decided the best thing to do so that I wasn't giving you bad information was uh, to take the video down, uh, spend some time getting to know the holster a little bit, get some more information from Joe, and uh, then remake the video. So that's what we're gonna do today. Um, one of you viewers uh, chimed in on a video I was doing on, I think, N82 Tactical or Two Nates holsters and, and they're a real comfortable holster that uh, I used for a while and before I went to Kydex and um, he's another big guy looking for you know comfortable way to carry in. He asked if I had tried the three-speed holster. It was uh, T-Bone Mills was his was his handle. Thanks T-Bone for uh, for the tip on this holster. Uh, so I do listen and, and read what you guys write and uh, and I try and check out as much as I can. Uh, this one was uh, particularly interesting so we got it into the studio and tried it out. So uh, Got the I got the holster in, did the video like I said, and um, pulled it back down. And I called Joe up at three speed the other day, and he spent about an hour on the phone with me. And uh, uh, not only talking about the holster, but heck, he even gave me uh, just some personal tips about the draw and um, some things that he was seeing not only in the three speed holster video, but in some of the other videos uh, that I've done. He actually watched them and went, "Hey, did you think about this? Have you thought about that?" It was a great conversation, and I, I thanked him for his time. Spent about an hour, and I said it'll it'll make the video much better. I'll be providing much better information to my viewers. And he said, you know, Wes, I appreciate that, but really, I would spend this time with any of my customers. Uh, it is really about his businesses and his business and the holster and um, and how he feels about doing business. And I, I can't tell you how much I appreciate that as a consumer that there are people out there that uh, still do business that way. It's pretty amazing. Um, the holster was actually in. R&D for three years before they uh, decided, decided on a design and started to make the holster in earnest. And they've had it for sale for a couple of years so far. They've sold a number of them to uh, law enforcement agencies, both local and federal. And the holster was originally designed with law enforcement in mind. Let's talk about the, the basics of the holster, just sort of the, the basic features. Uh, of course, it has the wraparound belt. Uh, the the holster is molded for a particular gun. This isn't just a, a general pouch here. Uh, when I ordered this holster, it is actually molded for the Glock 19. And um, this is empty, of course. Um, so your holster there, it comes with, uh, their standard is to uh, also include the spare mag pouch, which is right there. And uh, that works really well. I've been really impressed with that. They can make this without the spare mag pouch, so uh, if you order it and you write none in the box where it talks about their, the size of your spare mag pouch, uh, they'll omit it or delete this portion, this feature. That allows you, some people like to have the spare mag pouch or carry their spare magazine in a different location, and that allows that to be done. Uh, it was originally designed for, or the thought was for appendix carry, but really the way this works, it can be carried in almost any position, and in fact, uh, I, I've never really been good about with uh, appendix carry. It just doesn't work for me. My, you know, I've got the egg-shaped shaped, uh, chub, and, and when I appendix carry, it just doesn't work very well. So you're going to see me about uh, 3 or 4 o'clock uh, with this holster. It works great there. This holster, because it backs 
the gun completely can be worn up against the bare skin. And because of that, uh, Joe spent a lot of time figuring out what was the right material for the, for the backing so that it, it would wear well up against the skin. And um, what he was after is, you know, you're going to sweat. It's unavoidable. You're going to sweat. Sweat's going to get in here. And he was looking for something that when, when you got that layer of sweat, it would not slide. That it would somewhat, you know, adhere to the skin and stay stable. And what he ended up finding was a material that is used uh, typically in car seats. And uh, basically think of a car that is, you know, the design that you would take to the beach or, you know, I, I, think, I can't think of one off the top of my head, a model right off the top of my head. But they have them out there that are designed for the on-the-go 20-somethings that, you know, are down at the beach with their surfboard and all that. And you, you see the ads. And um, so oftentimes they'll make seats out of material like this or this m material in particular. And the idea is that you, if you get in when your sw swim trunk's on, you just got out of the, the ocean, you're not going to slide off the seat because it gets slippery. And so he chose this material for that reason. And you can see it has, um, uh, well, I'll get closer views of the holster here to clip in, but um, it has channels here that help the sweat wick away. And I, I have worn this against my bare skin. It's extremely comfortable. And you know what? That adherence to your skin, it, it, it's not... It's not uncomfortable, but it provides a, a ton of stability. It, it is really kind of magical how that works. All right, that takes me to the front of the holster. This is a different material, and it's chosen for a specific purpose as well. The idea behind, uh, by the material on the front here is that it provides a gripping surface for your clothing. So this is going to fit, you know, up against your, your pants. And it all further stabilizes the holster because your clothing not sticks to it, but grips the material uh, much better than, uh, say, a leather would. So what you end up with is stability on the back and stability on the front according to the surface that it's, that it's in contact with. That's pretty cool. The design of the, this is rigid, you can see this, and, and let me get this up to the mic so you can hear it. There's actually a piece of plastic in here, and they spent a, a, a long time figuring out what was going to be inside this pouch and, or not a pouch, but in between the, the backer and this piece that I'm going to talk about next. Um, and he even tried Kevlar <laughs> in there. And uh, they came, they, they had one piece of plastic they, they kind of liked, but they did some torture testing on it and it would start to, to, to crumple and crease. And so they, they finally got around to the piece that, that ended up shipping in the production model. And, Apparently, this is a type of plastic that's often used in, in scuba gear. So they wanted something that was going to you know, hold up and stay rigid for a very long time. Um, he, he said it's too bad it's actually hidden in here because it's, it's pretty cool looking. Um, it is very rigid and it, 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 uh, it helps to create what he calls the cone for your gun. And that's uh, this, this action here. And we'll get to that more when we talk about drawing it. Um, okay, so... And I think I said this earlier, just a, a, an introduction. This is not just a generic pocket. You are uh, actually ordering this gun. It is custom, or the gun, the holster. When you order it, it is custom made. So it's made for. They ask for your your um, your pant size, your most common pant size, uh, the size of your magazine, and which gun you have. And he said, if he doesn't have uh, a gun for molding, he won't make the holster. So these are all. Uh, molded to your specific firearm. Um, this one, of course, for the Glock uh, 19, and and actually, I'll be honest, I just ordered one for the Glock 43 today as well. And uh, they do ask, are you using regular size magazines or extended magazines, uh, or you can go without one. The holsters see, actually come in, in five different sizes. When I say that, I mean the actual size of the holster is smaller for people with smaller waist. And the reason for that, actually, is they, they did a, a mess of testing to figure out where the stabilization was according to the size of the wearer. So, so the, the larger your waist size is, the larger the holster needs to be to remain stable. Uh, and they, they came up with five sizes that they, uh, that they use. And I'm talking about you know, the overall surface area of, of the product itself. So uh, obviously I'm, uh, uh, I'm the, the double extra, quad extra large, um, the, the biggest size, and so if you're uh, if you're thinner than I am, and you order one of these holsters, it's l l likely going to look well. Not likely, it will be smaller in size if you're 
if you're uh, much smaller than I am. So expect that. And, you know, that is really uh, about his research and development and the time he spent figuring this holster out So and, and how it stabilizes on your body. I thought I was really intrigued by the process he went through to do that, uh, to figure that out because... Um, uh, you know, guinea pig himself, and anybody's willing to do that, I'm, I'll take a look at their product. <laughs> lots of lots of things, consumer products that you buy, are designed around this idealistic or ideal or idealized uh, body style, and uh, that was not done in this case. Joe took the time to figure out uh, who his customer was and be ready to provide a product that was going to fit according to the size of his customer. Um, that's pretty unique these days, outside of maybe the clothing industry, and. Uh, you know, talk, uh, uh, if you're large like me and you know you're buying, uh, buying the larger clothes, even then it's really difficult for author rack stuff. They've put the pockets in the place that a thin person would wear them, yet when you put them on, you end up with pockets that look like they're on your fly or, or they're out on your hip. I mean, it just gets crazy. Uh, this holster fits me, and I mean, it really does appropriately fit me. So kudos to Joe for, for really taking that into, into account. And uh, not pigeonholing, not pigeonholing, uh, uh, you know, folks in the in the market for a holster into one bucket. Uh, I really do appreciate that. Let's talk about the retention of the holster. Uh, this is a little counterintuitive, and and I actually asked Joe about it. I said, hey, wh what's the scoop here? I, you know, I've got I've been carrying Kydex holsters, and they they really grip that gun, man. You, you when you go to draw it. Um, it's akin to hearing like a sucking sound when you pull it out of a Kydex, pull your gun out of a Kydex holster. And I said, you know, this is obviously not, um, you know, got that sort of retention. And uh, he had an explanation. I'm going to share that explanation with you and then tell you sort of uh, what my experience has been with that so far. He said, that's true. A Kydex holster does uh, grip onto the gun harder. He said, but you go back and watch your own videos and my own videos and look at yourself drawing out of a Kydex holster. And what you'll see, and it is intentional, um, you'll see your pants actually rise up as you draw the gun. That's causing you to pull up, have, have to pull up harder and higher. And uh, you're having to account for breaking that retention. And then when you do break the retention, your pants snap back down. And I will find that after several draws, my pants are, I have to stop and adjust my pants and do all of that which is not necessarily a bad thing. I have very good Kydex holsters um, and they work quite well, but that is a, characteristics of, a characteristic of drawing from Kydex. With the three-speed holster, he said that does not happen. First of all, you're not attached to the belt and because you don't have that, that sucking retention, um, when you make the draw, you're, you're not getting any resistance. He, he says the, the because of all that, the draw from the three-speed is faster and smoother. Um, and I'll tell you right now, I agree. I, I, I spent some time really practicing taking, taking his advice and his instruction on how to use this product into account and some extra advice about how I draw my gun. And I am really enjoying this, uh, the, the draw from this product. It's pretty cool. So the next obvious question was, well, what if I'm, I'm rolling around on the ground? What if, you know, I, I heaven forbid I get in that, uh, it, that need to defend myself and and we get into a tussle, I can't get the, the gun drawn, and we're rolling around, will I have to worry about the gun coming out of the holster? And he said, absolutely not. And he reminded me again that they have sold this product to, uh, to both the local and federal law enforcement agencies, uh, folks that uh, very much rely on the, the gun staying in its holster when they, when they need it to stay there. And he, he said, I have full confidence that the gun will remain in the holster. Well, um, you know, the proof's in the pudding. So I, I got up onto my, uh, my bedroom floor, put my, uh, put my gun on, uh, strapped it in there, and um, tried to pretend I was still in high school wrestling and rolled around on the floor as best I could. And uh, I really should have filmed it. My wife's very angry that I didn't film, film it and show you all. And she's behind the camera right now, grinning ear to ear. Um, but the truth was, uh, I could not do anything in all of as violent as I could possibly get, rolling, thrashing back on the floor, uh, back and forth on the floor. Uh, nothing I did made the whole, the uh, gun budge out of the holster. So, um, I mean, it's not a scientific test, but uh, I know myself and I know uh, how much inertia I can throw around, and I I feel pretty confident extremely confident that that gun's going to stay put if I have to get on the ground for some reason. Even if I'm, you know, going to get out and change a tire or 
you know, go look out under the car. I'm on the freeway and I got to pull over and look under the car. Um, just testing it myself, I, I really built my confidence. I, I think it's going to do just fine. I'm, I'm very pleased. You know, obviously this, this is designed to be very comfortable. It backs the whole gun. So that's one of the problems that I have in, the, in being egg shaped is the, um, uh, anytime you carry uh, in a holster where the, where the grip of the gun is exposed, you, you're getting that rubbing all day. And I think that happens really for anyone. But when, you're, when you have that roundness to you, it's even worse. Um, and having this, this backer against your skin makes all the difference. I can wear this all day and most of the time don't really notice it. It's that good. So they, they're hundred percent on their claims about comfort, at least uh, for me and my size, it's a complete home run. Another great uh, kind of comfort factor is no more instructor's belt. So if you're, if you're wearing a Kydex holster or anything that clips to your belt, you, you learn very, very quickly to, um, to change your belts out for, you know, thick gun belts, basically. They're called, I guess, an instructor's belt is what I've always called them. And they're great belts. I mean, they, they do a really good job of holding them in your pants, but they're not always appropriate. They're very bulky. Um, they can be sort of uncomfortable, very stiff. And because this has its own belt system and it, it secures itself, you don't have to wear a belt at all. Um, in fact, uh, it, because of that, it doesn't drag your pants down. You're not, I'm not running around pulling up my pants all the time. And, uh, and frankly, I can, I can wear this holster with a pair of sweats, um, and, which is something uh, no other holster I've owned uh, could do, uh, except maybe a pocket holster. And even then, for a very small gun, you're adding weight to the pockets on a pair of sweats. You're constantly wriggling with those things. So uh, this is ideal, and I have tried to wear it with sweats. It works uh, perfectly. Uh, shorts as well. Uh, smoking jacket. I mean, um, gosh, pair of, pair of speedos. You can pretty much wear this anywhere. Well armed person at a nudist colony. You could do it. Don't visualize. I know you're doing it. Stop. Don't do that. Um, you, of course, don't have to wear an undershirt either. So, no more A shirt, although I'm wearing one today because I'm going to do a lot of this and I wanted to spare your eyes um, just to. Flash in the old chub, but uh, it, it isn't needed. I've been uh, wearing this throughout the week without an undershirt, and it works just fine. You can wear the gun in the spot that makes sense for you, and that's fantastic. Now, um, I don't know about you, but the, I need my gun to fit right here in the hollow of the chub. That's where it conceals best, um, but it's not always comfortable to get my pants hiked up to that position when I've got a belt line holster. So, I'm constantly fighting to make sure the gun is properly concealed on me. With this holster, I can put it where I want it to be, and it's going to stay there regardless of what my pants are doing. The the mag pouch, the being able to carry an extra magazine, and I'll just be honest, uh, finding a comfortable way to carry an extra magazine just has never really been uh, possible for me. I, I just haven't run across the right product. So having this built into the holster like that, because of the way this holster stabilizes, you almost get that for free. And what I mean by that is I don't notice the extra weight of the spare magazine. And um, so, I, you know, it's not like it's pulling my pants down more to have some other blocky thing on my hip. That's a positive bonus because I, I, every day I carry the spare magazine where I wouldn't have before. Now, obviously it changes your reload process for the magazine because you're having to cross draw to get the, the spare out. Um, but that's a training issue. I've, I've done it a little bit, um, uh, just in, in practice out here at the range that I've done so far. And I think there's a big difference, uh, you know, honestly, I'm not, I'm, I've never claimed to be a self-defense expert, but um, I've had my adrenaline rush from time to time. And I think it's good to practice, you know, your draw and getting all those technical skills correct. It builds that muscle memory and all that good stuff. At the end of the day, though, I think if you have to use your gun in self-defense, the key point is really going to be um, having the extra bullets. All right, what problems have I had with the holster? Uh, to be uh, frank, not many. Uh, the one thing I will say is um, right here, you're going to see on the strap they have uh, their label, and right along this edge where... Um, I guess it's a, just where they've sewn this, this was a little rough. And 
uh, you feel it up against your bare skin if it rubs in the wrong place. And I talked to Joe about this. He said it's not something they hear had ever heard before, but he was able to take a holster out and go, yeah, that is pretty rough. And uh, here's what he said. He said, I think over time that will soften up. He said there are multiple places on this holster that have a break-in period, and we're going to talk about that. And he said, I think that's one of them. But if after a month or so when the holster's broken in, if that's still rubbing me, he will make it right. Um, no bones about it. I thought uh, I thought that was it was really good to hear. Again, it's a you know just another sign that there's uh, uh, he's standing behind that product in a big way. One of the other things is is really uh, I don't know that there's any solution to, but anything like this that you wrap around your body, particularly if you got any size to you, you're going to find that it will do this. Um, it's just the nature of being large and trying to wear something like that around your waist. Uh, you know if you've ever tried to uh, you know, shatnerize yourself and put on a girdle. You you know that uh, uh, when you're when you're egg shaped, um, you, you tend to watch that stuff just sort of roll up and 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 turn into a belly band or whatever. It's uh, this is not near that bad, um, but it it does happen, and you can see the creases right there um, that that's happening to me. And you know, frankly, uh, a couple of times a day, I end up having to reach in there and maybe do a little adjustment that's vastly less than I would uh, say have to adjust a, a holster on my belt. All right, let's talk about how to wear the holster and put it on. Now I'm, I'm gonna give you a caveat. I talked to Joe and I had demonstrated how to put this holster on and he said, I actually have a better recommendation for you. Excuse me while I take a sip, I'm doing a lot of talking. He said, rather than what I was doing was uh, jamming, the, taking the holster, and jamming it in my pants and then strapping this thing on and then trying to adjust it down. And um, he said, yeah, but really the best thing to do is to undo your pants, put the holster on, and uh, then take your pants over the top of the holster and then adjust the holster into position. And I tried this uh, to compare the two sort of methods for strapping the thing on and he was dead right. Um, that is really the best way to get this into position, but I'm not taking my pants down on this camera. Uh, it ain't going to happen. Uh, I, if we really get desperate, I will put on a tutu first and then put the pants over or something to avoid the combobulation. But i uh, not going to be taking the pants off today. Which does bring me to another point, however, and that is using the bathroom. Um, all the other holsters that I've had you go into the restroom and so it's always been an issue. So I, I go in to use the urinal and um, you know, under your pants and plop, there goes the gun. And I mean, I live in North Carolina. Uh, you know, I've, I've gone in to, to use the, uh, the stall, sit down, have my gun hit the, you know, hit the floor and you get Mr. Creepy next to you and you know, he's staring into your stall, which I know is, is sort of freaky, but the one time it did have it happen, the guy saw my gun under the stall next to me. But I live in North Carolina, so what I got was, hey, is that a Glock? What model? Oh yeah, I carry this, and so we're having this kind of awkward toilet to toilet conversation about who's carrying what. But if you live in a less, um, I don't know, I want a free state, but if you live in a state where the fear mongering has sort of taken hold to the, to the, uh, to the populace, it's not always best to have your gun seen, and you may, be concerned about that occurring. With a belt, a holster that attaches to your belt, um, it was constantly a fight for me. to worry about it at the urinal, worry about it going and sitting down in the stall. This completely takes all of that away. Because this has its own belt, I simply leave the gun in place. I can do whatever I need with my pants while keeping the gun covered, and it's never an issue. So uh, there's something I've never seen talked about in any holster video anywhere. And i uh, never seen that as a feature of a holster. I'm not sure, Joe, whether that was an intended feature of yours. But you need to put that in your marketing information, brother. It's good stuff. All right, let's talk about how to put this thing on. Um, what I'm going to do, I'm going to change the camera position. I'll be right back and get you a whole look at the chub and try and explain this the best I can. Hold on. Hey, if you haven't met him, uh, this is Don King. Okay, we refer to as, uh, as Don King is our microphone and uh, helps us protect from the wind. So everybody say hi to Don. Hi, Don. Uh, all right, so let's talk about how to put this thing on. Now, 
imagine, but don't visualize, imagine me taking my pants off. Um, the idea being you need to zip this guy around like that and you put the gun and put the holster where you want it and then you pull your pants up around it and there you go. So hopefully or likely where you're going to be is all of the your pants belt and stuff is going to be over the top of the belt of the holster and this is going to be secure inside the pants. The best place for me to conceal the gun actually ends up getting really high up in my uh, you know kind of in between roll one and roll two. You got my wife calls this the uh, lower chub and the upper chub. And so that's the best place for me to wear the gun and the best place to conceal it. So I end up doing a little little thing um, to get the gun in the right place. And I feel good about that. Now, throughout the day, what I found is sometimes I will end up as my, you know, you just go around the day and the pants adjust and stuff. That, that this belt will, the holster belt will end up riding up a little higher on me, and I, I don't really have a problem with that. It, uh, it keeps the gun where I need it to be. And that's the beauty of this holster system is it's gonna put it where you need it to be. You can wear, wear it where you need it to be. Now, I'm sure that Joe will say the best place for it is where your pants are providing uh, support that's, that's part of the system of the holsters that your pants and the holster work together to support your gun. But I'm just going to tell you up, up front that you have, uh, in addition to that, you've got lots of other options where this holster still continues to do its job, and I'm pretty impressed with it. So, all right. Um, so now I want to talk a little bit about this material that's back here and the idea of how this holster cones uh, to hold your gun. Because this is this rigid plastic back here, the way the holster was designed is to do what's called a combat grip. And I know a lot, a lot of you out there are going to know more about this than me. And it's not something I've, uh, uh, that I've practiced or been doing because I've been using the Kydex holsters. The idea is that when you go to grab your, your grip, your gun, you force your thumb in behind the gun and come up with your thumb already in the proper position for your grip. Um, and uh, that's generally described as a combat grip. Now, this is not something... Um, that I have practiced. It's not something I've had to do so far, so I've got a couple of days into doing this. Uh, so this may not look the cleanest um, if you compare me drawing out of, say, one of the Kydex holsters. But again, this is video one. We'll talk more uh, maybe in a month or two as the holster breaks in. I'll make another video and sort of tell you where I've gotten so far. So practicing doing that, um, one of the things you're going to notice, this material here is uh, another purpose chosen material for what it does. It is designed to stand up against that gun rubbing up and down on it all the time. So they chose a material that was going to hold up to that. Uh, I think he called it a twill. It's a specific kind of twill. And the problem with that though is that while the holster breaks in, that twill is pretty rough. And he said you need to do the, that con, you need to jam your thumb in there because what that does is it creates, it opens the cone where the gun is gripped and allows the draw to be smooth. Um, and he is exactly right. And then I said, yeah, but I'm rubbing the crap out of my thumb. And he, yeah, that twill takes time to break in, wear a Band-Aid, um, <laughs> man up essentially. Uh, no, he said it much nicer than that. Uh, the reality is he knows that's the case. He is trading off some break in time and potentially having to tell his customers, cover that part of your thumb while you break in, in exchange for the durability. And I can truly appreciate that. There's a, a cost to doing a lot of concealed carry. You adjust how you wear your clothes. Um, you know, there's all additional concerns that you take on there. And this is just another one of those concerns. You've got a break in time for this holster. I think you saw, or and if you didn't, I'll, I'll get some close-ups of the holster here for you to look at. But um, this is not, uh, you know, hard molded stuff. It's, it's... Uh, it's a material that gives. So when you go to reholster your gun, uh, that has to expand back out to, to hold the gun. And there, so there's a trick to doing this uh, and, and making it easy. You draw your gun. When you're ready to put it back, first of all, don't be a speed demon. Um, he talked about sort of moving to the right leg, which helps to get 
uh, the muzzle of the gun out away from you. So that's something else I'm practicing. I think that was a good tip, and I think it's a tip for any holster, really. But what you want to do is, as you put the gun back in the three-speed holster, you can sort of move it back and forth like that, this way, to help you get it into the pocket. And the other thing that I found and and was that as you do that, you want to keep your thumb back there, and it helps form that cone, which will help to get the gun to the receipt. Let's shoot a few rounds and uh, see if I can put any of this to practice. That's where I'm at with the three-speed holster. Um, I am really liking this product quite a bit. The comfort that you get out of the way that this thing fits is uh, like no other, and I really appreciate that. I've been looking for quite a while for something that would allow me to carry the gun where I need it to, to be, but also be comfortable at the same time um, and be able to, to dress for the weather. You know, it's hot out. I don't, I, I don't want to wear an undershirt. I want to wear something nice and light and thin and uh, you know walk around in a pair of shorts or if I, I want to go for a walk I want to be able to wear sweats this holster does all that I think the thought that he's put into sizing the holster for the frame of, of the customer uh, is going to be key now while while I'm getting uh, just you know lots of options here for me because of my size I think if you're if you're thin or uh, more uh, typical typically sized person you're going to enjoy this holster quite a bit as well it's going to give you the the uh, option to go appendix or three o'clock, you know, five o'clock, do just about anything you want um, with that holster and get the, um, the stability for your firearm like no other holster is going to give you. Now, there is a, a break in period here, and it's, it's, you know, really typical for the channel. I try not to do too much ahead of time. I try and get the products or whatever it is I'm products or whatever it is that I'm doing the video on out in front of you first so you can see my early struggles with it and the process I'm going through to learn to adopt it because I think that's the process you're going to go through as well and that's where we're at with this video I want to take a couple of months I'm going to wear this regularly this is going to become my everyday holster uh, until I find a reason not for it not to be um, and so far I can tell you it's probably going to be my everyday holster for a very long time but as the break-in period passes um, I'll check back in with you talk about sort of how this, you know, the label rub and the comfort of the holster and uh, how I've done with the break-in and, and the pressure on the thumb and all of that. And uh, I will have a lot more practice at uh, the draw and the, the reholster and hopefully a lot more to say about it then. Um, but uh, I just wanted to bring you along early in the process so you'd know what this was going to be like for you. The three-speed holster, I would strongly urge you, even at this point, even though I haven't been through the break-in process, strongly urge you to look at it if you're if you're um, in need of a comfortable solution, something that backs your gun like this. If you have similar issues that I do, this may be the option for you. All right, folks, always remember anyone can shoot. Anyone can shoot and have fun. And we'll see you next time. Yeah.